Hello everybody. Welcome to the course on urban land use and transportation planning. Uh, we will start with module 1 which is introduction and overview to land use transportation planning and the first lecture would be on introduct would be on introduction to land use transportation planning. The topics that would be covered in this lecture would be on urban land use transportation linkages, urban local self government, responsibilities of urban local bodies, rules, regulations and laws and on different urban planning institutions. So starting the uh, looking at urban areas in general, we can say that urban areas started to develop when lot of people started coming together and they and they settled at a particular area and this happened when they found that when when they were coming together and they were living together it actually led to certain advantages so some of these advantages the primary advantages that was uh, considered was related to transportation reduction in transportation cost and that means people used to live in lot of uh, villages or rural areas and they for traveling for them to travel from one village to another to trade or to you know get get certain things it was it would take a lot of time so when they came together obviously at one location when a lot of people were staying that reduced transportation cost to a large extent then of course uh, when people came together it basically uh, there were large markets in those particular urban areas and so the number the options and the choices that were available to users increased quite a bit so that give the, that you know, that led to a uh, lot of benefits on living in a particular uh, that particular area then availability of uh, different kinds of services and because services were shared between a large group of, of that but that services become more affordable then when so many people came together of course there was exchange of knowledge that took place and then of course safety in numbers and economies of scale that means when there are lot of uh, people coming together uh, and also not only people even there are a lot of farms or you can say businesses when they came together that actually generated economies of skill. So these were the benefits based on which urban areas started growing and some disadvantages were also there for example uh, because it's an urban area and land was uh, more uh, the price of land was uh, you know higher compared to rural areas the cost of living also increased. And then when so many people were li living together that also led to a higher crime rate and then higher pollution and of course when there was more pollution it led to more mortality. And when uh, and there was also another aspects in terms of uh, transportation you can say when we are living in a congested city the travel time between you know for traveling from one zone in the city to another actually increased because the roads were congested. So these were the, some of the disadvantages of living in an urban area but overall the advantages outweighed the disadvantages and uh, urban areas gradually started growing. So in addition to the advantages that I talked about in the last slide, uh, there was some another fundamental change. For example, the labor, you know, there, uh, people were engaged in agriculture earlier now they are engaged in lot of multiple trades so that means division of labor took place and this specialized division of labor because of technological development actually required agriculture and other trades to be segregated so that also led to growth of cities and then uh, because uh, uh, this segregation happened between agriculture which was you know primarily based on the rural area and there was urban area and uh, where there were the other trades like commerce or you know retail and then what happens goods that were produced in the agricultural hinterland needed to be brought to the urban areas and that also led to transportation of goods so freight transportation also started and when we look into, into this transportation we also saw that some of these cities started growing as uh, trade hubs and somewhere became somewhere uh, beside a river or somewhere beside sea they some of them became ports and so uh, trade started in between cities as well so it was not between the city within the city and also city and the peri urban area but trade also happened between cities as well so there another you know highways and you know subsequently highways or trade routes started forming 
So, uh, so once this kind of development happened, the city gradually grew and then we found that land was becoming scarce in most of the urban areas and the city needed to grow. So the initial settlement which was uh, defined by a group of the settlers and a uh, few initial people who have migrated to that area, now because of this uh, tremendous growth, it started growing and expanding and that actually required uh, more acu you know, acquisition of more land from the surrounding areas. So agricultural land started getting transformed into urban areas and then of course uh, division of this particular land is for different uses. That means certain lands were reserved for residential areas, certain lands were reserved for, uh, agri uh, for uh, uh, industrial areas and so on. And this was because of the market forces. That means based on the market forces, the amount of land required as well as the price of land and the location of land was also guided because of the market forces. Now, when we are talking about the growth of the city, obviously transportation is a part of the city and transportation started growing as well. So initially, uh, when the settlements were smaller, people used to travel on foot and, they, and then gradually the horse carts came and then uh, after the horse carts, the railway came and then gradually and then of the uh, the main invention the new uh, the new invention of automobile actually st you expand started expanding the cities at a great pace so that is when the cities started expanding very very fast and that led to the growth of urban sprawls so this process is explained in this uh, images as you can see the first uh, when the cities were small When the cities were small, people used to walk and they used to, and the size of the city was also small because everything was to be within walking distance. Then came the horse cart and as you can see, when along with the horse cart, certain roads started growing and the city started expanding in the different directions. And then came the transit line, that means railway lines and along with the central core city area, the city started expanding in the direction of the transit corridors like this and then in the locations of the station they new suburb areas were created which started growing like this and so on then once the city started growing along with rail transit the highway network started coming into place as you can see this red lines are the highways and you know i can join them and then in in the roads in between also started developing and the city started really growing very, very fast. And when the city grew this fast, then automatically what happened, there was congestion started happening along the roadways and all. And we see that, okay, uh, the people fe felt that, okay, a ring road is required, which will bypass some of this congestion and make them travel from one part of the city to another. So somebody's willing to start from travel from here to here, they will probably travel along this particular line. And when the ring road came, of course, the expand, expansion didn't stop. Cities still st keep, kept on growing. And you can see these were the expanded suburb areas, as you can see in this particular picture. So the city, the, uh, the suburbs kept on ex uh, growing. And in, with, along with the first ring road, we had the requirement for the second ring road. So you can see the highway connecting with the second ring road. And then we have an inner ring road, which became part of the city itself. So it became part of the city's normal road network. So that is how cities kept growing. And one of the primary problems with this kind of growth uh, has been, uh, this has been discussed in many forums, or, and this is one of the primary problems that we see in urban development today. And we can see that, that when cities were compact, the amount of fuel and the amount and of course when fuel use is less the amount of emission coming out of that fuel use is also going to be less so we saw that very compact densely built cities actually had got very smaller footprint in terms of both the land area but as well as the amount of gasoline or fuel use and the resulting emissions were also less so we see that most of the cities in today's context we see that most of the cities in the Asian region or Asian continent, we can see like starting from uh, Hong Kong, Bangkok, these are the cities where there is very, very high population density. That means more number of people are staying in a small, smaller area 
and you can see the amount of fuel that is uh, the amount of fuel or the amount of emission that is coming out of that cities so here is hong kong the emission level is here whereas population density is over here hong kong is uh, you we can argue that bangkok is not that developed or maybe certain uh, cities are not that developed in asia but to, if i take tokyo hong kong these are very very developed cities and you can see because of their form or because of the way they are they are more densely packed the amount of emission or the or rather what is the amount of fuel use and emission both are less so uh, definitely compact urban forms transit oriented developments this kind of uh, 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 city planning initiatives were starting to uh, is were gradually taken up so we can definitely say that land use and transportation systems are linked inseparably and when with along with land use development that means when land use start uh, started growing uh, and we and also land use started getting divided into different kinds of land uses then these different kinds of land uses require spatial interaction that means there has to be movement in between this land, uh, land uses and this is made by the transportation system of the city so that means with land use growth transportation system is also required as well as transportation system also grows along with that but similarly when transportation system grows we see that certain amount of land use growth also takes place now why how this happens for example when we a transportation system grows that means it's not only the infrastructure part of it it is also like provision of a transportation service for example a bus bus line is provided in one of the corridors so then we see that okay because of the bus service is being provided many people choose to live along around this particular corridor and we see that you know number more number of people or this corridor or the length of the corridor growing or more number of people coming to this particular area so that actually leads to change in the land prices that also leads to lot of people you know developers coming there and building new houses so land, transportation system changes certain characteristics of an area and that leads to spatial development as well so both transportation and land use is not even though they are separate system they are also very very linked and we can say that transportation system actually improves at the attractability of a particular area and we can say it improves accessibility of a particular area and that is why accessibility is a very very important term in land use transportation planning so along with transportation and land use if there are many other system in an urban area and not only system we can call them phenomena as well so these are the system that also starts growing or rather they are also linked with them and there may be growth and there may be decline or some problems may or some problems will be good some phenomena may be good some phenomena phenomena may not be good so we see them changing as well so first of all when a land use, when a urban area is growing we find that along with the land use change we see there is change in the employment and there is also change in the population distribution so for example when more number of people when there are new jobs created in an urban area or rather when you create a industry in an urban area a new land use comes into uh, uh, you know new land use comes in and new land use is formed and that actually attracts employment and that when there is new employment lot of people migrate to the city and they started staying in the city and so the population distribution changes and then when new people come in or new jobs are has to be provided with some sort of places where they could be hosted so commercial institution offices and residential buildings start growing in a particular urban area that actually when this uh, kind of residential building are there that means uh, people have to go there using certain transportation modes certain transportation routes and accordingly the travel behavior of people will change they will decide on what mode to choose to go travel to that particular uh, building or particular destination so this land use building use all these things are you know interlinked and then we also see the networks and the travel time taken to travel those networks that means in certain routes it takes longer time than other routes to reach a same destination so that also gets influence so and that also means that if more people go to a, use a particular road then the travel time along the road will be slower and people will start shifting to other roads and probably they will also change their mode so in this way there is also feedback coming from the networks into the 
travel transportation system or the mode choice system and eventually the overall urban land use transportation system. So another major factor that actually is very very linked with transportation is urban environment. So not only transportation land use as well for example if we uh, have too much amount of built up area it may lead to uh, um, uh, lead to flooding so that is a, a problem that happens in the environment or if there is a lot of uh, a uh, uh, lot of cars along a particular corridor you see a lot of emission taking place along that corridor and people al who live along that corridor would probably suffer from diseases related to air pollution so these are the different impacts that are there so uh, along with land use and transportation we need to study these impacts as well and we also need to study this particular phenomena and systems so that we can understand what are the impacts of the different policies that we take in urban area. And when we talk about policies, there are also rules, regulations and laws which also guides us on how to plan for urban areas. So we, can, we have to follow these rules and whatever plans we will make should be within the guidelines of this, within the constraints set by these rules, regulations and laws. Coming to the different laws, regulations and rules that are in, in place in India, I would like to start with the 74th Constitutional Amendment, which is a very, very important act in, for urban planning. And uh, before I, even I start that, I will say that in India, land is basically a state subject. That means the state government is responsible for all sorts of planning and development. So when the 74th Constitutional Amendment is, was enacted, and then uh, it stay and uh, it was enacted for the purpose to give more powers to local municipal bodies or local uh, institutes local uh, governments so that they can take their own decisions so that means with the uh, with the enactment of this particular act formation of local self government in urban areas also became unconstitutional obligation so what are this uh, local uh, self government so these are the different municipal corporations or municipal councils or nagar panchayats and these are the different elected bodies which are elected so and so that they could govern or manage certain areas now municipal corporations are for large urban areas and nagar panchayats are for the transitional areas and similarly municipal council looks into the smaller urban areas <clears throat> So within each municipality also there is a requirement to, uh, for formation of ward committees as you can know that wards are smaller administrative bodies within a municipal uh, corp within a municipal council or a corporation and this also has to be formed and there are elected members from each ward and this uh, election is held in municipalities every 5 years so that people have a chance to choose a new uh, executing body and then and then uh, when this body is uh, and the body is also given a lot of power to execute certain things that that could be that has to be taken up in urban areas for example the different responsibilities and powers to execute different work items in urban areas is listed in the 12th schedule so i will come to go to that but before that i would li also like to highlight that municipal finances and state finance Com uh, commission these are again two important bodies are formed which actually looks into how municipal areas or these urban local bodies would be provided the funds to actually execute the work which should be taken up in those particular uh, uh, urban areas and along with municipal areas or urban local bodies there is also requirement for formation of district planning committees and metropolitan planning committees and these two planning committees as you can understand from these two terms that metropolitan planning committee is responsible for looking into a larger metropolitan area which includes not one but multiple municipal areas maybe and maybe some uh, nagar panchayats as well whereas district planning committee refers to a regional again a regional uh, scale development area or a district where there are not only urban bodies but also rural areas and this entire area is uh, design, uh, is actually uh, planned or rather is the uh, the coordination or coordinating the planning between an urban area a metropolitan planning area and a district planning area is taken up for this particular uh, this committees okay now looking at the responsibilities of the urban local bodies from the 12th schedule 
there are certain uh, uh, these are the points that are listed in the slide like urban planning of course urban planning including town planning then urban poverty alleviation and urban planning for economic and social development for that particular area promotion of cultural educational and aesthetic aspects then uh, there are other things like the municipalities uh, also this urban local bodies would also be responsible for collecting the statistics or the data for this particular area so that the births and deaths this these are recorded properly then it should also in safeguard the interest of the weaker sections of society so these are the different tasks that are in front of the municipal bodies and along with that there are several tasks which are related with land use and building use for example regulation of land use and construction of buildings so that is a that encompasses both town planning as well as municipal uh, uh, municipal bylaws and municipal rules then slum improvement programs uh, regulation of uh, uh, pro areas uh, build, uh, uh, regulation of slaughterhouses and tanneries so that they could be uh, put in certain areas which we, where they don't harm the environment then our provision of urban forestry protection of the environment and promotion of ecological aspects and uh, then of course provision of urban amenities such as parks gardens so on and then in terms of infrastructure and services municipal bodies are also responsible for building the different roads the flyovers the bridges provision of public amenities like street lighting parking lots bus stops so and then of course provision of different services like water supply sanitation fire services and so on so as you can see the municipal body is responsible for governing the entire urban area starting from the plans that has to be prepared and also to finally executing the plans in form of projects for particular urban areas so along with the 74th amendment there are several other laws which are also important that needs to be uh, taken care of when we plan for an urban area for example when we uh, execute one project like a flyover we need to also uh, acquire land which has to be taken from existing land owners of that particular area for that we have the right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act following whose which guidelines uh, this people for whom the land is being taken they are being compensated then we have the model region and regional and town planning uh, uh, and development law and along with municipal law these are the two guidelines which actually allows planners to prepare plans for an urban area then we have policies and acts related to industrial development then policies and acts related to environment and then of course policies and act, and acts related to preservation of ancient monuments and archaeological sites so these are the different laws that urban planners should be aware of and these are the following the guidelines and the restrictions given in this particular laws we need to plan for different urban areas so along with the different uh, laws and as you have we have under, we have understood earlier that well land use and transportation and there is and several other systems and subsystems in an urban area are all linked and uh, urban when an urban area grow all these things needs to be monitored and their plan and we need to prepare their plan so that their growth we can guide their growth or we can take them in a direction which is actually suitable or sustainable so so in, in when we talk about institutions uh, the first institution uh, that actually plays a role in uh, urban planning is of course the town and country planning department this is a central government institution and they are responsible for the different you know, helping the different uh, urban local bodies to create plans and uh, they help in spatial planning uh, socio spatio economic development and they help in preparing the state perspective plan the district and metropolitan area development plans and so on then they also provide legal support for spatial planning and development and what it means is whenever a plan is executed whenever a plan is prepared it has to be put on ground that means actually they, it becomes a, a, a mandatory document a statutory document which has to be followed by everybody who is living in the urban area so there is lot of legal issues that crop up and that support is provided by the town and country planning department and then there are preparation of development plans for urban local bodies in certain cases even the uh, most of the work could be given to consultants sometimes the town and country planning department also takes up preparation of these plans 
and then formation of different standards, laws, regulations and rules uh, based on which planning should be done for urban areas and, uh, and also development of our information system uh, in comprising of maps and other kinds of materials uh, which would be helpful for planning for the different parts of the country and that is also taken up by the town and country planning department. So along with town and country planning department, there are two committees which we already discussed. Uh, so we, there is district planning committee and then there is the metropolitan planning committee. Both of these are also formed so that they can take up planning for their respective districts or metropolitan areas. So these are two other institutions. And of course, the urban local bodies are there and they need to plan for their own sustainable development. But when they plan, they should consider the different constraints such as the total population, the population density and the distribution of population in that particular area. They need to take into constraints the geographical boundaries, the geological features, the, you know, the amount of area that is in hand so that they can plan for uh, a certain number of population and they no, don't exceed that particular capacity. Then existing development of an area that means how the area, the historical past of the area and the kind of structures that are already or the land use that is already there, socio-economic issues that the area is facing and then uh, jurisdictional and regulatory issues like there is some environmental regulation that is in place for the, for example, there is a forest. So we need to take care that, okay, development doesn't happen into that or encroach into that. Then investment and financial issues, that means making sure that we get enough money to execute the plans that are being proposed for this particular urban local body. And of course, taking care of the, the different technical issues that also arise while preparing a plan or even executing a plan. So these are the role of institutions that we have got in urban areas. So in this particular, so these are some of the references you can follow. Uh, one of the major references is the urban and regional development plans formulation and implementation guidelines. This is prepared by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development for urban planning in Indian urban areas. So this uh, you can look at and I would like to conclude the first lecture or le uh, this particular lecture by saying that while land use and transportation are independent urban system, they are linked and they have to be considered like that, they have together. And then urban land use planning and provision of transportation infrastructure, facilities and services are both the responsi are responsibility of local bodies. That means local bodies should take up land use transportation plans. And then urban land use and transportation planning is also guided by several rules, regulations and laws which both act as constraints as well as guidelines for developing our future urban areas. Thank you.